Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer, and today I'm gonna talk to you about crowd control. Crowd control, it's quite an abstract type of concept, which why I'm currently not standing behind a DJ desk because it doesn't actually have to do with DJ technique. But I feel the art of crowd control is a lost art. And if you've checked my Instagram, I've been doing these DJ basics series about crowd control, giving you some specific pointers. But over here on YouTube, I have more time to explain fully. And so today I'll give you five pointers as to how to learn to control a crowd. First off, a little story about why I'm making this vlog. I was at a show one day and I was the headliner and the act playing before me were opening up and they were doing fine. I mean, playing a lot of hits, but they were doing fine. But the set was not going anywhere. It's one thing to play all the hits in a row after each other, but at a point in the night and at a point in the set, you can just ask yourself, okay, where... Are we going with this? I kind of imagine the, the DJ booth being a cockpit of like a spaceship you need to fly and this whole crowd is on a journey with you. And this, this right here, this concept is what they used to call DJ storytelling. Okay, so let me give you five tips as to how we wrap all of this into one another. Number one, quite most importantly, is watch the crowd. And it's interesting, right? I know there's a lot of you producer DJs out there that love planning a set and uh, figure out, you know, which mashups and acapellas and the buildup of a set and whatnot. And this is absolutely fine. But the fact is crowds are different everywhere. Any city you go, any country you go, any time of day, a festival during the day, club at night, VIP club, small bar, birthday parties. Every situation is different and in every situation therefore it's important to watch the crowd. Who am I playing for? Are we at a birthday with friends? Are we at a wedding? Are we at a bar? And if we're at a bar are we there at opening hours or are we there at closing hours? Am I playing an after party? Situations will vary and the crowd will vary as well. So within this a few simple concepts so you're looking at who are you playing for you throw in a certain track people start dancing a little bit less which in that case is not a really good thing and so you'd need to come up with something else or you play something and they love it they start dancing harder so that's a good thing so give them more very simple concept okay number two work the energy there is a field of energy going on within a crowd of people dancing and you are giving that energy to them by fueling them with your music. Now a simple solution could be to keep the energy high, right? Just keep the energy and go, 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 keep on going. But unfortunately, this doesn't work on a dance floor because at a certain point, all of the energy levels have been properly exhausted and all of that energy doesn't actually feel that energetic anymore. Or the other way around, if you're not monitoring the energy and the crowd is like, okay, you know, we're dancing, okay, we're dancing, and this just keeps on going, then the energy is low and there will never really be a moment where the crowd is like, yeah, where you actually take the energy higher. And so it's good to see and to notice, say you've played three energetic tracks to just take it a little notch back so people can breathe again, people can acclimate again, and therefore for your next track, it'll, the energy will go from here to a little dip to back to the f fourth instead of just here and possibly flattening out that line. Within opening up, I like playing with that energy where sometimes you just take them, literally take them on a little bit of journey where you add a little bit of more energy in the next track and then a tiny bit more in the next track and a bit more in the next track. So you have like this whole line and at a certain point, everyone, like literally everyone in the crowd is going crazy and they don't even know how you're manipulating that energy. And that's an awesome feeling. Before I tell you more, if you're liking what I'm conveying to you, sharing my experience with you, make sure to give me a like right now and hit that subscribe button. And let's get back into it. All right, number three, flip the moment. So when you have an energetic set and you have been building up, 
there will come a moment that the crowd isn't as engaged anymore. Even though you are playing the hits and even though you're giving all of your energy, they're kind of like losing attention and they're like scouring off to the bar or they start talking to each other. That'll be one of those moments where you flip the moment, where you've Maybe you've been sticking to one genre or maybe you've been flip-flopping through genres. That's the moment where I usually in my sets just throw an odd curveball. Either I play, you know, a track without beats or an 8-bit version of a track everyone knows or maybe the Tetris theme or a guaranteed sing-along that everyone knows and that everyone stops and they'll be like, you know, all of them are singing along. Or say I'm in a commercial setting, I'm playing in a VIP club. Maybe I'll switch it to something techno. Flipping the moment for me has been so essential where I saw the crowd, I was watching the crowd, I was watching the energy and at a certain moment they just taper off, you flip it around and the energy gets renewed. Number four, how much of you is actually in that set? Because all of us can play like the, the biggest tracks from the biggest playlists that everyone listens to, we can play them back to back. Anyone can do that. But how much of this is actually you? How much of this are you playing that you are truly passionate about and that you would truly be dancing to if you would be on the dance floor listening to yourself? In my time coming up, DJs were always known as being tastemakers. They would come with the new trends, with the new hottest tracks, things that people never heard of and were able to find a way to get people that weren't really as interested to dance to those tracks. And this is really where you will be standing out as a unique artist for your type of taste, for your type of mixing, for your type of presentation. And mind you, I'm not talking about making unofficial remixes, aka bootlegs, edits, and mashups, like, oh, you know, I'm the only one playing these. I'm talking more in the realms of you as a music lover, have these couple of amazing, interesting, awesome tracks that no one knows and how to fit those in your sets to represent you. I myself personally love moments when I'm listening to a DJ and I hear this awesome track which I don't even know and I start shazamming on the dance floor to try and find that title. And I personally love, love, love it when a DJ has their own identity and that you can hear the DJ's own identity in between the hits. So it's in between the hits what I think makes you, you. And then number five, where are you going with the set? So obviously you're not going out of the club and back to your house with the set. I mean, what are the peak moments you're working towards? What I always have in my head, and this is why I never want to be tapped when I'm DJing, is I have a little cloud of tracks going around in my mind. I always kind of think four or five tracks ahead as to where I'm going. This is why it often takes me a little bit, you know, if I'm somewhere in a set and people ask, hey, can you play this or that track? I'm like, yes, no problem, but let me build towards it. Let me grab like two or three tracks to try and, and put that in. And so my storyline still continues the way I had it planned. So it's very conceptual, I understand, but you're playing a certain track and you're working the crowd and where do you wanna be next? Where do you wanna go in four or five tracks? Or if the energy is down and you're thinking of flipping, how will you work towards flipping that moment? So there's always a sort of like a, a build and a structure going on. Most of the time I would not advise to be like, okay, so I just wanna go there, I'll play the track. This usually on a dance floor feels very sudden and there's no prep for that there's no build-up for that there's no nuance for that and so say you want to play a highly energetic track and you're currently in a lower energy realms take a good you know two to three tracks depending on the energy of the crowd to go there and then after that you might want to think okay so if I have this energetic track and I dropped it everyone went, went crazy but where do I go next should I keep on playing that energy? Should I take it back? Or should I flip it around? A little bit conceptual today, but I, I hope you can sit and just think about what I told you today. And I hope you can utilize that in your live sets or even if you're prepping sets about the energy and flow of things in your set and what makes you, you. Some tools from me to you to use for your sets. And if you're interested in hearing more from me, I have two online DJ courses up on digitaldjtips.com. Make sure to check them out. Those are like full everything I know 
type of DJ courses and you can learn everything that I have accumulated over these, wow, over 25 years of DJing. Make sure to check the link down below to check that out. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as well. And I will catch you back here on the next one. Until then, L's up.